morning, everybody. What is up? Welcome back to another episode of the Spectator Mode Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Keith Mitchell, and I'm joined with three other of my fantastic buddies. Uh, I don't know what Carl's doing. He's just doing stuff again. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like picking yeah. on him because, he, see, see, this inside joke, when he comes here, he's going to kick me in the private parts if he ever gets here. <laughs> That's my buddy Carl over there. We got Scott and Wright, and Scott is... Uh, we're going to lump him in the same room as I am in. We just got them talking before the show about a certain game that he wants Bandai Namco to make, which they're never going to do. What is that game, Scott? Tell me, please. Again. Dot hack. Dot hack, huh? You'll, you'll get a dot hack when but Nintendo gives me a damn F0. <laughs> we have the developer wanting dot hack. We have a few, a lot of, well, basically fan, the entire dot hack base. community wanting dot hack. But the one who yeah. holds the keys to the kingdom is Bandai. And they Bandai are Namco. Like, You're not Sword Art Online. Yeah, yeah. You're what are they, they saying? You're not Tekken. What or te- well, even, even Tails game have issues. What have they said? We're making a sort of online game to the switcheroo and make it a dot hacking. Oh no, it just happens to be on. Oh yeah, actually that'd be the greatest switcheroo. You gotta hope for that. <laughs> the, 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 the only other problem is that there's no dot hack anime that, that they can sort of semi base the games around because the the games only came out when there was an anime to accomplish it. All right, all right, all right. Hey, hang on, hang on. We got to introduce Matt, the cynical motherfucker below me. <laughs> Matt. Cynical? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean realist, okay? If I was cynical, I'd believe I mean, cynical and realist I... can be hand-to-hand. Let's be honest here. Uh, to a certain degree, to a certain degree. See? Cynical, just, yeah, to a certain degree. <laughs> Gr- grumpy old fart. Yeah, you Man, go. Hey, you're grumpier than me. You you love Man, spider right. you're, you're more hateful than me. You love spider I know. I'm used to abusive relationships. I, I would oh, read my I'm used to it. It's like, <laughs> that's why it hurt me. <laughs> All right. Um, but, the feels bad. <laughs> but before we get started with uh, today's episode of Spectre Roll Podcast, um, unfortunately, we had some bad news last week. We had a um, an inspiration, a fantastic gentleman who gave us a lot of things in this world. Dragon Ball, Dragon Quest, influenced so many different things. Akira Toriyama passed away at the ripe age of 68, unfortunately. There's just too many people going out, just making this world a sadder place. This man was a, he was fantastic. He was fucking fantastic. He was oh, the reason why. One of the goats, one of, the goats of the Japanese anime and manga scene. Like, he was so good that this is my oldness cooking. And uh, Tetsuka, the godfather of anime before him, said that this guy is great. Just want you to know that. Just want this you to know that. He man, was so good that God this, and knowledge. Yeah, this is know? a man who didn't think very highly of himself, but everybody was like, man, what, what are you talking about? You're freaking fantastic. You're doing God's work. And he's gone. You know, and I'm not going to talk about the shitheads. And you know, as I'm, I'm dropping some bombs mm. today, I, I really don't <laughs> care. Don't, 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 go, don't go into the, to the negative, really, man. Like, I'm, I, I, the people that are talking shit about this man, they need some help. This man was fantastic. No, it's, it's, it's how to put this right. There's a difference between like I'm going to be real with you, hating Queen Elizabeth when she died as someone who was cribbing descent. She had it coming. She was a monster. Um, and hating a guy who delivered art that like inspired generations of people. There is a difference yeah. between hating like an actual you know, monarch and an actual <laughs> artist who made something that we all like it it consumes. There are people who know nothing about like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, etc. And they're like, oh yeah, that's Tori. Yeah, I seen that's the Dragon Ball, right? <laughs> like I can throw, I can I can throw Dragon Ball to a random 60-year-old and be like, oh yeah, that's that's the anime thing. That's, that's it. That's, 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 that's the one where they spend four episodes screaming at the top of their lungs, right? <laughs> and we are that's impressed good. with all four episodes. You were all uh, impressed, especially, especially the part where he just turned Dragon a different Ball color. Ball Z. Z. <laughs> yeah, it, it really sucks, but I don't worry. Matt and I talked about this before. The, the Dragon Ball franchise and everything else that the gentleman worked on is in good hands. Do not worry about it. But at the same mm-hmm. time, I mean, you, you should be worrying about that. You, I mean, this man made sure his legacy was going to continue. Yeah, you know, Tori- and- Toriyama was the type of planner who would have had details going on the next three, four storylines. Mind you, no, he best, probably would, he, mind you, he doesn't remember characters. You know, when was the last <laughs> whoa, time whoa, we whoa, ever whoa, saw whoa, launch that's... on a friggin' show? Who was launch? What color was Trunks' hair again? What color was Paul's yeah, hair again? again? <laughs> He didn't forget them. He's using them for a plot. He swears. No, no, but, uh, there's yeah. a better but, reason uh, for why the hair yeah. changes. No one's... Yeah, there's a re- yeah. It's part of the time. It actually was a timeline. But um, the the thing is that like Toriyama, 
made it in like when he found out about his condition he made a studio which was like in his when he was in his late 40s he made his studio got his people he worked with for years and then trained someone i just call nicknamed toyo son toyo son he trained for years he wrote his he wrote every technique everything down to a manuscript there are several manuscript art books that are in locked in in the in the toriyama like jailhouse i call it is that no one have access to but those people so there's everything know how to do in itself Toyo's art is so close to Toriyama, only po people like myself or hardcore could probably tell the difference. Toyo san draws people, uh, the eyes a little gentler and less sharp. He doesn't use hard angles like Toriyama, but you will never notice that unless you look deeply into it. That's how good Toyo san is. Toyo san is mm -hmm. doing several of the Dragon Quest art and doing the art for Super. You guys got this, okay? Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. That next Gen X I, chapter is coming out like two months from now, though, but we're ready. <laughs> like, 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 basically, uh, Toriyama's sort of like notes and everything that he has, uh, like you know the 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 secret eleven herbs and spices for KFC or the the, the, the coke recipe. <laughs> they're man. not like, exactly they're, that reference. They're, 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 lo they're locked down. They're locked down under so much security <laughs> that even like you know the 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 government of Japan can't even get a hold of them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming in FBI. That's like the like, recipe for Coca Cola. We'll never know what it is. <laughs> But I mean, it's in the title. It's Coke, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it used to be. Used, used to be, yeah. <laughs> used to be, yeah. But, like, to be honest, uh, like, there are some people out there who went, you know, uh, why are people so upset? Like, I saw so much come out when the announcement went out on the 8th of March of, of Toriyama's passing, which was the first. They kept it secret for seven days, which is yeah. very surprising. Very impressive. But the amount of people that came out of the woodwork to pay respect to the man, like just from fans to celebrities to other companies to like, you, you didn't realize how deep of an influence Toriyama had not only on the animation and manga industries, but also video games, animation oh, yeah. in general. Oh my God, yes. Like I, I was finding out stuff that I never knew about Toriyama and his influences in uh, certain spaces. Like I, I didn't realize that the the little Sonic like ring logo thing yep. where he pops up and does a thumbs up thing. Um, that's inspired by Doctor Slump. Yep. You know, I I didn't realize that, and even. Like even Nintendo even put out that Toriyama's influence with uh, I can't forget the, the the little girl in Doctor Slump, our yeah, little robot, <laughs> yeah. Arali. Um, she was a big influence to the design of Mario. It's like th th this guy has pretty much a, a lock in to so much, and, and he he wasn't just like the Dragon Ball guy. You know, video games why Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger, some of the best games ever made in the RPG genre outside of Final Fantasy. You know, he was a part of all that. The the art, especially for 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 Dragon Quest and uh Chrono Trigger. It was some of his best works. And when they redid Chrono Trigger for the PlayStation, he was you know, basically advising on the CGI cutscenes. And then, of course, you got the, the line of Dragon Ball games, which goes on forever in a day. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and, wait, 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 which my big hint to retro collectors, get in now because they're about to jump in price. Yes. <laughs> you don't uh, have I, the entire collection. Yeah, if you don't... If you, Ichi will be complete. <laughs> yeah, well, that that oh, that's already going up in price and I'm already annoyed because I need two and three. Uh, <laughs> but but I, as, as I showed just before, you know, I've got... Um, I, I was like, I, on the day the announcement came out is when I picked this up, when I picked up yeah. Mordecai 3. Uh, I got that on the cheap, luckily. But it was one of those things, like, straight afterwards, like, I wanted the the, P, the PlayStation ones. So, you know, Ultimate Battle 22, um, The Legend of the Dragon, and uh, Dragon Ball GT. Yep. I just needed Legend of the Dragon to complete my set. I was lucky that somebody had it up for cheap. So I went and I picked that up. And it's like all this stuff's gonna go up in, in it's gonna have a, a set a sort of a semi price jump because of the passing. Everybody's gonna be wanting to take advantage, which you know, boo on you if you're taking advantage of a poor man's death. What? 
What are you talking about? That's what all people do. With uh, I mean, capitalism. Yeah. Capitalism. Yeah. The blow, the blow up is that like I've seen some stores actually run out of box collections for some for Dragon Ball Z. Unironically, um, so I, there was this book that was on hold for a while by Akira Toyama. It was reprinted by Biz called Akira Toyama Battle Theater, which is a collection of his early short stories before he made Dragon Ball, even post Dragon Ball era. And I never had a chance to find it. I've been looking for it. It's still in like the wings. I have to find a little way to get it. I've been trying to get that book for about six months now because I, I uh, Toriyama has done like a, it's one of the worst things I heard on the internet about Toriyama. Um, I, and I, and this is just the whatever. It's like some people say, "Oh, Toriyama just got lucky," and I'm like, "Do you don't know this man's career? He's been around since a lot of times, like luck yeah. after luck after luck." Right. Yeah. So he's been like, even if you take away the Banger series, he's been running short stories and concepts. He's been published. He's you know he's won some awards, and he's been doing this for such a long time that by the time that Doctor Slump and Dragon Ball took off, he was already he like he had a following because all his short stories are bangers. Mm -hmm. So it's like he developed the following and then made it something big, and he just kept going since then. So it's like this shows to me like a lack of I like to call it intelligence. Uh, look at the man's work because he was like pretty much like had a following of things he was doing from his weird sci-fi comedy series to this one about like a spy. He had all this stuff, and I wanted to read what that was, but I can't find that book. So if somebody lets gives me a link to Battle Block Theater that's available, that's not through some kind of BS, I would gladly pick it up because that's I need that in my collection. It, it's it's also one of the things that he was a mega car that was basically involved from beginning to end. Like there's a lot of guys who who go out and say, "Oh, you know, I got this hit, one hit series, I did it all," but then you actually find out that like the artist was a friend or something like that. Right. He was he was a guy that basically he conceptualized the characters, drew all the characters, wrote their backstories, wrote the stories that they were being involved in, and even when uh, Shonen Jump sort of said, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta sort of chill and and take a break." He's like, "No, nah, I'm gonna still sit over these guys' shoulders and and tell them what's going on." No, you know, he, he was he was he was never hands off with his creation, and the only way that he, like, the other reason why we got Super is because he wanted it. Yeah, this wasn't a this wasn't you know Shonen Jump turning around and going. Hey, we need a, a new Dragon Ball series. He turned around to them and said, "I'm giving you a new Dragon Ball series." Yeah, he, like he just came out the blue. It's like, all right, so I want to make a new Dragon Ball series. Like, what? Are you sure? There are, yeah, yeah. There I'm are do it. Don't so worry many about rumors it. as to why Super started, and I, <laughs> the best, the best one that I've I've heard is that he walked out of a screening of Dragon Ball Evolution and said, "I'm going to rewrite that fucking script, That's and I'm going to do it my way." <laughs> A part of me so deeply wishes that. that was the case, but no, he, he just wanted Dragon like, Ball Evolution he... was so bad. Toriyama turned around and said, I'm remaking <laughs> Dragon Ball. Like, <laughs> we have Dragon Ball at home. <laughs> no, it's basically, but it's, it's 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 just insane. Like, his work ethic, like, if you hear the stories of how he helped, like, he was one of the leading figures that helped make Chrono Trigger, you know, the RPG of the, of the century. His, his iconic work in the Dragon Quest series, which is Chef's Kiss, like, even like. One thing people don't talk about, Toriyama's really good at drawing monsters, comically and seriously. People don't talk about it. He's really good at drawing monsters, man. Really good. Chef's kiss. But it's like, this man has always been doing something. So it's like, all right, uh, I need something to do. I'll, I'll bring back Dragon Ball. I can do it. Like, are you sure? Don't worry about it. I got three chapters in lock. Let's go. <laughs> all right. I mean, we love the man, but we got to move on, folks. I know we'll, yeah, we'll be talking true. about this for hours, so. Let's move I'm, on to the next will. topic. Um, damn, I, I just said my voice wasn't so bad. Now I'm already starting. Now to you're dying again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dying again. I got two. I got two topics. I want three topics. I got to get through. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me while I uh, swallow and not die here. So, Contra Operation Lagoga La La Laguanga. La Google. La can't talk. Lagoga. Google. Google. Well, I can't talk. Give me a water. Hang on. I'm sorry. <laughs> you dying out here, man. You need you need to get that. You need to get that. Uh, that air air. air One more dose of cost matches. <laughs> Contra Operation Galuga came out yesterday. No, today. And I have to say that one. If you haven't read my review over at the definitely go check it out. I talk about everything in the game, everything. Two. I know a lot of people are probably saying this is a bad Contra game. This is a decent Contra game. The gameplay is there. Um, obviously not everybody's a big fan of the graphics and the audio is still as muted as it was in the demo they did not fix that, that really sucks <clears throat> I do think that um, 
way forward kind of lost their way in the last couple episodes of the game. And I'm reading some people complaining about that in various places now where they started adding trap after trap after trap. And I'm like, this is not Condra. You feel, I feel like you were trying to make a platforming game and then realize, Oh wait, this is Condra. You're not supposed to do that. This is a run and gun arcade game. That's only supposed to last you about an hour at most. So I, I, I don't know what they were thinking. It's a fun game. It's better than the last piece of crap that we got for Contra. Um, it's not as good as Contra 4. It's not as good as some other Contras, but it is an enjoyable game. I do have an issue with the perk system, which is something that a lot of people did not talk about. So let's talk about the perk system. In Contra, every time you play the game or attempt to play the game, you get access to credits. These credits are then used in what's called a perk store. These things range from giving your 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 character better abilities like invulnerability long longer vulnerability uh starting with a, a weapon keeping certain stages of your weapon because you get two stages of your weapon um double jumps better slides vulnerability while you're dashing things like that and if you beat the game you get access to three other characters who were in conjure hardcore for the sake of genesis there's also if you do the Konami code which is actually still in the game you get access to here we go buy the 30 lives you know in conjure super conjure you enter the code you get 30 lives and that was it you have to buy the the uh the, the uh 30 lives remember when codes actually unlocked shit right <laughs> the ability to buy shit so everything in this game everything that you want access to you have to pay for it in, in uh in credits and when you do the konami code you also get access to uh Five different soundtracks that are in the game. You get one for Castlevania. You get one for the 8-Bit Conjure. You get one inspired by the 8-Bit Conjure. Uh, you get one for um, Konami Classics. I haven't purchased that one yet because I'm like, I'm really tired of this perk system. And one <laughs> from Conjure 4. You know, and it's just like, you know, why? I mean, it's already hard enough to get credits in this game unless you're really good. Or... uh you just it, keep blasting and grinding a game over and over. It feels over like a, a not a good way for like grinding for like extra additional content. Like um, I'll make a comparison, not to cut you up. So but, one game that I played into oblivion, I got this is one of the very first like games I hundred percent last year, like Double Dragon Gaiden. Double Dragon Gaiden has a great point system or cash system to unlock things. It's not it's like unlocking a character is like maybe hundred, hundred, whatever, but it's like the points replicate how much cash you get to, to beat the game, blah, blah, blah. But it feels like this is grinding and it doesn't really feel like it scales properly. Like you're just like, at, like every stage you're guaranteed to get two bits and every item costs like 20 bits, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's sort of like that. It actually also reminds me of a like game, game of the ago. planet. If you ever played Metro, uh, Mars uh, Matrix, it kind of reminds me of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are you sure that this game wasn't made by 2K? <laughs> now, this is why I made sure I pointed this out in my review because, again, not a lot of people actually talked about this. And it feels like they're forcing you to replay the game. They're, they're, they're trying to make some kind of unnatural replayability, which I really don't like. In my review, I stated, with this system in place, people are likely just going to beat the arcade game, beat the story mode, and go, eh, I'm done. On top of that, the big issue is, as Matt and I talked about earlier, this game is 40 bucks. This game is not worth forty dollars. I would even go to say this game is not worth. I would pay twenty five, twenty nine dollars. I'd say it'd be a ten. It's a ten dollar game at most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, you're not it, really, it, you're it, not it really is one. Of, it is one of those. It is one of those. You wait for a sale when it's like at yes, half or ex exactly. more to buy. It is. But but that's the thing, it, it, and this brings up. I hate to bring up previous topics that we talked about. But the amount of times that we've seen this transition where everything games like game designers or management of game designers or whoever does makes these decisions, they don't see games as games anymore. They see them as secondary jobs. You know, you're grinding everything. Everything has some sort of currency tied to it and the unlocks are either pay real money or spend your days grinding like hell for next to nothing in the, the currency to unlock it. I don't know who thought a good idea, this was a good idea to put a, a way in the game for grinding, to force you to grind a Conjure game. A Conjure game! 
the worst part about it too is like um i think i think one of the perks is in the game is like something i thought would be free and, and by the way other games that i play actually have this free like blazing chrome uh speed run mode is something you have to unlock yeah you have to something so basic something so basic 15,000 like, credits. Are you kidding me? Way too much for that. 15,000 credits. And and what do, <laughs> what do we get? What do we get for the little playthrough we did the other night? Like maybe 300 at most? Yeah, and that's right. my thing. It depends. So it depends on how fast and how well you do it. Now, I'm not uh, trying to counter that. I played through I played through the arcade mode again last night and I did it really fast. I already beat the game. I know how to put them doing. I beat the game really fast and I got like Five thousand credits, right? It's a speed test. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I already yeah. knew what I was doing, I, and I had like a shit yeah. ton of lives and whatnot. And Condra, come on, sometime in Condra, you got the, enough lives. Thing, you go, is, I don't care. I'm going to run through the stuff because I have, I'm invulnerable for like two seconds. So the shit that kill me, I'm just going to run right through it. But but the thing is with games like that is how many people are going to keep playing it after you played it through the first time? That's exactly what I said, Mario. Right, game. and, and like, the, like, no, no, like no, nobody, nobody's going to grind it. Just to unlock a speed run mode or some stupid shit like that, you know. And to be honest, like Keith did, ask myself and Scott to to jump in on a multiplayer. And multiplayer, while when it works, <laughs> it it, when great. it worked, it, it was wait, great. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, but... me, let me let me correct you on that. Let me correct you on that. There is no online multiplayer because remember, remote Steam remote play. Is like pretty Local much like parsec co-op. Yeah, te yeah. Te te technicality, technicality. Yeah. It's, there's it's... no online in this game. That's kind of weird. Actually. Well, then how did I join your session? Did I send a carrier carry a fucking pigeon? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How did I join your game? Did I did I join it online or did I send you a carrier carry a pigeon? <laughs> Technically, you joined my computer <laughs> and played it. Oh, no, you yeah, you hacked into my system. <laughs> so you go in the matrix. It, it's, it's still, it's still has. I mean, if you want to get has it, on, it has an online component in order to play. It has no online component because you a, a can't multi, do that on play a multiplayer. You can't do it on consoles. Yeah, right. and the thing, the thing that makes me kind of upset about this game is like, like, like I know people are viewing it. It's like, okay, currently on Steam, it's on sale ten percent, making it thirty five ninety nine, which I think is high. Full retail price of the game is forty bucks, thirty nine ninety nine. I'm like, yeah. holy smack! That is a lot. If this game was like twenty nine ninety nine, like okay, you're pushing it. Twenty four ninety nine, mm, I'm hand wavy. But it's like that's forty bucks, like forty bucks for, like mm -hmm. bro, come on, man, that's too much blood for me. Like I like my running gun, man, but come on, man, that's oof. I can I, there there are way there are way more content. Like, Oh god, there's way more better like run and gunner contra s games for by the indie developers that cost way less and aren't this like grubby with un unlocking mechanics. Like Agreed. that's insane. Agree. Just like like you mentioned Steam, like there's a lot of people bitching about that. One guy improved graphics and arcade gameplay, but this is not worth 40 hours. I might yeah. pick it up again if there's a sale and it's on sale for 20. It's worth yeah. 20, 25 hours, which is what I said. So yep. I mean, here's the here's the rough guys. Anybody who wants to play the game, I'm not going to say don't go play it. That's your prerogative. I think the gameplay is there, but you're paying at, way too much. Yeah, at, at its core, it's Contra. They, right. they haven't changed the freaking formula at all. And that's one of the best things about Contra. It's run, gun, die, and repeat. That's I mean, all you, if that's all you want out of the game, then that's exactly what you're getting. But, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to recommend it for full retail. I was like, going to play it's Blazing Chrome, Chrome, but that's the case. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like, yeah. Blazing Chrome is a better game. I mean, did I say that out loud? And, and, and also I mean, you can say it louder for some people, but, you know, it, it's, it's better facts. than Contra Corps. Remember that piece of shit? Oh, God. Yeah. I, I want Contra Hard Corps Uprising, that, the one by Arc Systems, but, yeah. Uh, they were supposed what, to be, what, they were supposed what, to be a sequel. What, it never happened. Never happened. One thing, yeah. I, one thing I will say about this Contra game when we played it, um, there is a glitch that they really need to fix very, very quickly with remote play. It's the it's the one where it knocks out your controller or adds in another player that just shadows somebody. I think like we that, just that, got that, that thing up. that thing was I, just bad. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It was just a bad instance for us. So what are you talking about? Is we were playing and we all jumped in, and then apparently my computer was like, "Oh, I'm gonna throw another player in there." So and that player shadowed everything that I did. I jumped, it jumped. It moved forward, I moved, I moved forward, it moved forward. 
And then it would do something really stupid. It when we all died, well, I was still going. It stole my life. <laughs> like, how did you do that? How did you start How did you stole my life? Stole my life, my life. So it it's a fun game, it's a good game. I don't think it's worth the 40 bucks. If you want to pay it, fine. I would wait. Or find somebody who's playing on Steam and say, Hey, can I just jump on in the session with you and do remote play and see yep. if you like it and move on from there? Yep. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. And if you want to play a really good multiplayer online game, play Hell Divers. <laughs> For democracy, <laughs> do it. Democracy. Much more worthwhile forty dollar game. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. Um, I this this topic is this one is very personal to me, and I just snuck this in there because I have to say it. Uh, you guys don't have to jump in, but I have to say this. So there's been a lot of people talking about as a release recently um, that how great. PC gaming is and how great PC gaming has become over the last couple of years. Now, I find it interesting because I see a lot of people who are talking about how great PC gaming is now, where these are the same people that were saying PC PC gaming was terrible, was trash, it wasn't worth it, and it would eventually die out. You know, now they're holding up their their Steam decks and their ROG allies, and I'm building a brand new PC, and oh my god, this game plays so much better than it does on my PlayStation, and blah, 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 blah. You know, and these are the same cats that were like, Keith, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're stupid. PC game is never going to go anywhere. And it's like, what did I tell you? Exactly. What did I tell you? You just did not want to listen to somebody who knew what was exactly what was happening here. I don't understand that. And now for you to go, it's her, it's the best thing ever, guys. You should try it. So maybe you should listen to somebody who's trying to help you in the beginning so you didn't have to stumble as much as you did. Maybe you wouldn't have wasted all that PC, money. PC gaming is pretty bad. I mean, that one time I put on PC and the game and boot was pretty terrible. You know, that, that was a horrible experience. <laughs> but no, but on a very, very serious like no, like as someone who comes from the fighting game community. Like PC gaming was like kind of into us. That's so another one. Please, the thing please, is like it depends please. on the scene you come from, right? So if you're playing, if you grew up playing like poverty games or like fight, you want to play older games. Fight Kate original was godlike. Like if you wanted to play, like you had to know a guy to play like Melty Blood, you know AA, which is great AC. You had to find someone. If you want to play some like Waku Waku, you had to find someone who had it. So PC gaming was a wow. way for us to play those games. Waku Waku. Yeah, Waku Waku Seven. Yeah, yeah. good times. Wow, I haven't heard that game in a minute. Jeez. Yeah, I know. This is again Grandpa FGC man here telling you about games. Saw. Jesus. Yeah, I know, but it's like PC game has always been that way. And I knew that there was like during the mid to like early two thousands, during the hype of Street Fighter Four, people would try and say, "Oh, I got to put you know, there's input delay in in the piece in the uh, Xbox version, input delay in the PS version, Sony version." I'm like, whatever, PS4 version, whatever, or PS3 version, whatever. And it's like somebody said, like, "Yo, we should just use PC setups." And that was a good idea. The problem is PC setups at the time for us poverty kids were expensive. So we just end up at the time like using Xbox until Sony sponsored Evo and then we used the Sony version. But it's like that was a big deal. Like that frame delay made a difference. So and then we had like, you know, launch Street Fighter V, which was, you know, just not a great game. But that's the thing. Like PC gaming for fighting games or like games that are more intensive been like been the go-to. I mean, I mean, I I, I feel like Unironically, like there was at a time, there was a difference between playing Overwatch original, I'm not talking about Overwatch 2, because what, what, what is Overwatch 2? <laughs> Overwatch the original on PC and Overwatch original on console play like two different games. And that's yep. it. And, and I really mean that unironically. Like Overwatch on console, oh, it Pharaoh was king and Torbjorn. <laughs> Say it again. Mm-hmm. Say it louder, please. Yeah, on Overwatch 1, Pharah and Torbjorn were king. It was a like, night and day difference. It was a horrible mm-hmm. experience because of how it worked on console. But on PC, hit scans were top tier. So it's like, it definitely was it's a very good. different experience. Against Widow Mains on PC. <laughs> yeah, Widow Mains on PC <laughs> with like, they're freaking like two, two DPI please, please. crack headshots. <laughs> please, 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 Murphy, give me your RG uh, Road Hog. Give me my Flank Hog back. Yeah, like, no. well, he's kind of back in Overwatch too, but it's okay. He wants to play that. Nobody but wants to play that anymore. Like, to, give, to give you an idea, like Matt and I used to play the original Overwatch together. And yeah, like, Matt would go around, he'd just start shooting shit for no reason. I'm running around as, as Roadhog, just grip hooking and one shotting people and throwing them off ledges and everything else. You try going into like modern Overwatch 2 or whatever, even just like Overwatch before they ended it, it was trash. 
You're hurting me. I, I don't even want to talk about Overwatch 2. I just want to talk about how... But no, no, but there, there's a significant difference between, like, PC and, like, PC gaming and console gaming, even for the oh. same apparatus. And for, yeah. like, fighting games, it was very apparent. I mean, granted, the developers got better at some and it was very apparent even in FPS games. One big one was Overwatch Original. And it's, like, PC gaming is superior. And I think I mentioned it before, like, a couple podcasts, like... If you invest in PC gaming, you will save money in the future, guaranteed. I don't pay well, any you will. subscription you service will. anymore. You definitely will. Yeah, you know, I don't pay for any super service. I think I let me look at my number. I save about seven hundred sixty plus dollars in a couple in like two years switching for that stuff. So it's like, yeah, trust me, it, it pays. I mean, I'm not yeah, gonna, I'm not gonna lie to people and say, hey, you know what, PC gaming, it's the cheapest form of. of of uh, oh of hell no. out there, it, it, it's not, it's not. And I'm never going to say, hey, you know, no, no. build a PC or go buy a PC. I'm never going to say that, but I will say. That hey, you know, it is perhaps the best place to play a game. It has come so far from you having to get a game oh. and install the game and then install drivers. Well, well that well that's, the that's, that's that's the big the big thing too, is I this is probably one of the realms, and as much as I hate digital gaming, PC is probably the one realm where it has been the most beneficial. Cause like me going back to like starting the days of digital game uh, of uh, PC gaming for myself, playing things like Syndicate and Mortal Kombat 2 on a PC, where Mortal Kombat 2 required seven discs. I'm not talking <laughs> CDs, kids. I'm not talking CDs. You know that 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 thing, that save icon on on Microsoft Office. Oh, that used to be an actual physical. <laughs> I don't even have piece any of those media. in my office anymore, man. No, me yeah. neither. I don't even have. I don't even have any of those floating around my house. Twenty five of those to install Windows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Heaven forbid you know, if one of them messes up. If one of them is one of them got corrupted because you had a, a magnet too close to the, the disc or something, <laughs> or or you got a. A, a friggin' uh, electrical pulse go through the drive and absolutely just wreck the drive or something. Or you just touched it by, you know, or you just touched the film with your finger because people did yeah, that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, was know, it, it was there done. Was so many, there were so many ways to screw that up back in the day. And games used to be, you know, I, I saw an original Doom five discs of five floppy disks, five of those fucking floppy disks to, to install Doom. Now Doom can be installed on a friggin' pocket watch, you know, or, or you, 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 you know, smart, smart watch, smart or whatever. Watch. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's, um, a, it's a, it's a, and, 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 and yeah, and it's come from there to you know we had CDs, then we had DVDs, then we moved into the digital realm, and like just installation of games has gotten so much easier and so much better because not only was it that we had to load up the discs. Each individual disc over time, which could take hours, then then you had to make sure you had your drivers co configured correctly. I'm not just talking like, hey, I'm going to install the latest version of uh, NVIDIA video drivers. You had to make sure that it was configured specifically for the game. You had to go into DOS mode. And you had to configure it all through your settings. You had to make sure your audio card was the right card and everything else. Like, just to play a game took almost several hours of setup, and now it's push one button and it's all done. Pretty much, you know. And, and not only that, but it's like I think it's also the technology as well, like using Mode Seven graphics and stuff in the beginning. And the PC was a, a, originally just a glorified arcade emulator. Like it was probably the best way to play a lot of early arcade games. Now. Man, it's like the stuff that they pull off is equivalent to Hollywood movies. Like development's gone, like the quality's changed a whole heap, gameplay has changed, the installation methods. Like back then, if you update were to your game, update yeah, your game up, now, you could actually update your game. You could actually update. You didn't have to wait for the publisher to actually write physical discs and send them out. <laughs> yeah, we didn't pay you know, thirty dollars for an update. We, we had to buy it. We had thirty dollars for an update. Buy the StarCraft but, battle chest just to get the Brood War update. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, oh exactly, exactly. You know, and even the fact of online gaming. You know, it used to be that, that PC gaming was a solitary single person affair. And that's why everybody favored consoles because consoles had 
you know, two or more controller ports. So you can sit there and you can play with your friends on the couch and you can play multiplayer games. You couldn't do that on PC until the <laughs> internet started becoming a thing. Well, then so all of a sudden it was wow. possible, but the problem then, was you had like only one keyboard to use for two people. Yep, yep. yeah, we there were multiplayer games to try out, and even like Newgrounds in the old old days of the internet had mm -hmm. multiplayer games where it was just like, yeah, one side has to use the WASD, one side can use the arrow keys, use the one keyboards, uses the yeah. IAPKD. <laughs> yep, yep, exa exactly. So many and different configurations. It was a mess. But now yep. it's such a beautiful place. It's a great place for people to come in and play their PC games and play pretty much mm -hmm. every genre game out there. There's nothing that has not graced the PC right now. <laughs> and you can take your game and go. You can play it and go. <laughs> yeah. Even if you emulate stuff, I'm not going to uh, uh, sugarcoat it. People emulate shit all the time on their on their, on their Steam Deck and their, on their ROG Ally. Come on now. Yeah. It is what it is. And I love it because I can take my stuff mm. and go wherever and play it and come back home and play it. You know, I can play but, pretty much everything between my Steam Deck and my ROG Ally. But, but, the, but the, this is the thing, though. Like, I, I'm not going to assume for, for Matt and Scott. I know Keith and I are of the older, older persuasion. Like back in the the eighties and the the early nineties, man, the computers that we had back then. Oh boy! Do, did you ever think back then no. that like we would get to where we are now with no. PCs? No, my first yeah. PC was a Delta Gold Elite. It was a PC clone. That's what they called them back in the day. A PC mm -hmm. clone with a black and monochrome monitor. It was slow as balls. Didn't mm -hmm. have a hard drive. It was. But it was the first PC my father had purchased for us. And that started me on my PC life. And holy crap, no, never, ever mm. in my lifetime, in multiple lifetimes, would I imagine that we would get to where we are now. Yeah. And that and that's probably the same thing that a lot of people who have said, you know, gaming PC gaming isn't going to be a thing. Is people who went through that era. And then went through like the '90s, through the, the evolution of the floppy disk and everything else. Even then, we still didn't have the greatest PCs, nor did anything really run properly. And the stuff that we did have looked like crap compared to the nice games. Not, and... not, not to cut you off, but there's a lot of God. I hate saying this. Younger people, people from the younger generation, you were just like PCs were just no. This I don't see this being worth my time. This is never going to be worth time. There's a lot of people I know that had to come back and eat the words because they were like, wow, you were right. This shit is amazing. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you no. that this is not. I mean, I'm not going to see my my my, gr let's, my, let's put it, my, my grandmother. My, my grandmother was one of those people who said the computers were a fad. My mom said that. this is, you know, but now she uses a tablet to play games on like when not my, not hardcore games but she like she yeah, has like little facebook well, games stuff when my mom facebook. was around yeah. she used to play the facebook stuff and then other games yeah. Yeah. Farmville. Yeah. Farmville. Yeah. yeah that was a thing yeah. <laughs> oh that bring back farmville. farmville i liked farmville <laughs> well, that was good but no <laughs> yeah but unironically the best way to describe it is like so you guys know i play point point adventure games i grew i was a lucas era art kid i didn't really play much sierra games so basically I remember having the three disc of Curse of Monkey Island, Full the throttle? third Monkey Island game. Curse of Monkey Island, the third Monkey Island game. Yeah, and great game. Animated beautifully, right? Three disc, it took roughly about, I want to say, two, three hours to install all of it and switch deck every time I had to switch between disc played game. Now I can play mm -hmm. Curse of Monkey Island on my computer, like that, nothing. Open Scum mm -hmm. VM, done. Open up um, Dockbox, I want to play the European version, done. That is the future yep. we live in, Chef's Kiss. And it's I can't speed run that game, but just kiss. Better. It's only going to get better. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing: like I, like I went back and played an old DOS box game. Does anybody here remember the? Uh, well, I suppose it's more so for for Matt. Do you remember the wrestling simulator simulator game Extreme Warfare? I'm aware of. I'm very aware of that. I'm aware. Yeah, okay. that is on the list of me to put into my own personal to try out. But yeah, I I, I played I played Extreme Warfare 9000, which was, had to be run on DOS box. And oh it was just God. a it was just a just a straightforward text simulation game. It was I went back and I'm like, wow, I thought this was the shit back then. Yeah, what, <laughs> now, what was like, I doing, man? What was I doing? But 
like and then you know from there like we now have you know as much as i just despise and have issues with it we have the 2k wrestling series like i never thought we'd be having like graphics so close to realism that you know it's it's insane i want to insert this gif welcome to the future welcome to the future yeah (laughs) look man i'm i'm waiting for um you know the other what's the other wrestling game i haven't heard good things but anyway aw fight forever i'm waiting for them to include curry man if curry man's on the game i'm not buying it i'm sorry curry man or not well then then you're not buying it <laughs> all right, stay on track, guys. Stay on track. Stay, right, on, stay, track. On, track, stay, stay on track. Stay on track. So my thing was, don't discount PC gaming. Don't call it crap. This stuff is amazing. It is kicking consoles asses, whether you like to hear it or not. Go talk to somebody about PC gaming. And if you have questions, come to me. I'll help you. I won't t- stir t- you wrong. T- t- don't. Slam any technology, to be honest. Don't don't say oh, it's going to be a fad or it's only going to last a few years or something like that. Because remember, we we've gone from things like this, you know, these type, of, these these. This is what we used to watch. This is how we used to watch media know, back man. in the day. Yeah. Mean, we, uh, to to, we to uh, like disagree like with this. you. <laughs> to like to you know these type of things of high quality. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We went, we went, yeah, we went I from VHS to like, yeah. like to have a conversation <laughs> with you. Do, 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 do you remember these kids? Do you remember these right now? Do you remember <laughs> these, black thing, these big black things that you had to? This is this was recorded media, by the way, kids. Yeah, <laughs> like but, that was that's just facts. Like, yeah, we went from but, oh, not God. to mention one of one of the worst adaptations of Mortal Kombat. We're not talking media. about that. We're moving yeah, it was, on. It was <laughs> a fun time for We're the kids. We're talking okay? about we... something that brings me another lot of another lot more saw about PC gaming, and that is Vanillaware not bringing its damn technical RPG Unicorn Overlord to the damn PC. For no back up, back up, back up, back up. Scott, no, 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 sorry, Scott, keep cutting you off. You mean Tactics Ogre, okay? You calling it the wrong no, title. It's, we're not it's doing ta- that. No. It is actually, oh, ironically, no. bro, it's Ogre Battle. I know, yes. we're not doing this. We're not doing this. Keith, oh, you Keith, never, you never, Keith, you never appreciate before, the classics. Before you, before you get too angry at Vanillaware for not bringing it to the PC. Oh, wait, no, Nintendo killed the way that you could have brought it to PC. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there's still real jinx there's still no whoa 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 yeah 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 we got, you, yeah, can, we put got the you can put the I switch mean, you can put the switch on I pc could go and have it play tactics or reborn on my pc but i want to play this and i'm getting upset that this company just doesn't understand the way things are working now but nowhere is a fantastic developer not going to shit on them not going to call them names or anything they're fantastic they've given the world so many great games dragon crown dragon crown pro odin spear one of my favorite games from vanilla where they've given us a lot of fantastic games but yet again it seems that the company does not understand pc gaming I will just say that for right now because it's, it's, it's more like it's more like the people above them. Like if someone else yeah. told them they'll do it, and that's kind of the issue. And uh, me and Scott know ex- exclusively about this. Like there is uh, this small company called Falcom. The you still call them small? Do you, you really this small, them small? This small independent company with like five people who work really hard. You know, <laughs> who loves who loves co- overcoming barriers. Like the that, moment that, that, they that, went... that's, that's like that's like saying this small indie company known as Blizzard Entertainment. Yeah, it's <laughs> <what> the <company laughs> they are there. They probably have lost a lot of people. Not, now. Lost a lot. Of people. <laughs> well, well, yeah, they've lost they enough to go back to that status. <laughs> small, Activision Blizzard King, you know, very small developer, and lost, you know, but back to things like. Scott can attest to this is that like moving to PC has gained them the audience to continue publishing their games because the Japanese market for RPGs or in general is flooded. Like to compete in the Japanese market in general, they, you have to compete with with freaking oh god, like Hoyo Burst games, Fate Grand Order, Psy games, and then everybody else. And it's like you are this publisher that makes really cool artsy games that almost went bankrupt. And like, yeah, I'm not gonna explore a new market called PC. Like, why? How are you still around? Almost went bankrupt twice. Twice now. <laughs> twice. Yeah. yeah. That's why you need to buy like three copies of every one of their games. <laughs> Honestly, I'm about to take my three? copy of the game back because if you can't support my platform, why am I supporting you? It just seems so weird because it's like 
it's not like Atlas has a version to because it it's like you know they put Sega tell them to do it, but it, I feel like someone has to be above them. Says we're porting this to PC, no questions asked. And by the way, I'm not even saying port their newer games. You can port your older game. You can give us Odin Spear. You can give us Dragon's Crown. You can give us Muramasa. You can make older games to prove your point to test the waters. But bro, you need to start thinking forward. You're, you're, they don't the even console- need to, but Matt, but Matt, but Matt, they don't even need to test the waters. Other companies have already shown them that it's possible. Yeah, but well, they need to test for their own fan base. They don't know. I mean, you you, you think that like on ironically, Scott, um, how how uh, how faithful they were about uh giving us uh, the trail oh god, not trails, uh legends of heroes and the cold steel with the PC. You know how confident they were about that. How talk about the confidence. Talk about uh... that. <laughs> That their their confidence in the first one, not so much, but uh, you know, and, and, no, that's true, exactly, not so much. So it's like they, they need to like build their confidence. That's what I said. Like, start by porting some of your older games, you know, throw some links and, and, and then let's see, move it from there. But and it's even like, then, it, and even then, with their older games, they had the PC gaming community behind them. They were like, you know what, your game is busted, but we're going to help you make it better. They even hired, I forgot his name, Durante. Who was who, who worked on a number of their mods or mods yeah. for their games, yep, and yep. then and then worked with them on their late, not this one, I think a couple of games before. So it's like, hey, look, this is what you need to do to make this game work better on PC. Yeah, Durante the, and GeoFirst both helped with Zero and Azure. <clears throat> the community was behind those like, PC ports run you. fantastic, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and um, too bad, now GeoForce is out there farming the town farmland. You know, <laughs> he's out there farming. <laughs> I just want to see more companies respect the platform. We've, like you said, there's a shit ton of them out there that are doing it, and I don't want to see Vanilla where all of a sudden go. You know what? The third time happened. We we are bankrupt. We can't come back from this. Because God knows we don't need any more great companies going the way of the dodo. If no, that even is gone anymore, I don't know. Yeah, it's just it's it's just ridiculous. We we don't need to see this. Bring your stuff over. You've seen so many different. Japanese role playing games come over to the PC platform and do fine, right? Bring and more, is, right? And the thing is, that I feel like they should be more open to it because it's like again, if they if they're truly thinking local, the Japanese market is already oversaturated. There's so much competition there; it is a tight space. And for a dub a single slash double A company to be in there is just difficult. Like, like as much as I love the yeast games, I don't think yeast is that big in Japan. Like, hell, Harvest Moon is because it's a cult game now. Even though Harvest Moon's like, no, I'm sorry, a wonderful life, the story of the seasons, or Chef's Kiss of Gaming, but they're not the, they're not the giant they used to be anymore over there. They're bigger over here than they are over there. Just let you know that one. So you should probably give us a, 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 us, us you know us, us Western guys a little love, you know, because we got this thing called money. Not even money. Western, because J- J- Japanese gamers play PC games as well. Eh, not as much. No, no, not as much. Not as much. So they, 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 I mean, they play it, but it's like they got their phones and they just play side games and then give all their money to you know side games. Oh, side games so rich. Needs can you make Grand Blue Fantasy Link too, please? You know that'd be great. Side games. Just, you know, you know, be, they're still working on the first Grand li- Relink. They still, oh, they still work. Oh, right, right. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Sequel in six months. <laughs> oh wait, we're supposed to be getting uh, some DLC soon. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it's like I, I feel like it's a lot of Japanese. Going. I cannot wait yeah, for but, that. Yeah, I can't wait for that. But it just feels like a lot of like a lot of developers. I feel like like they need to have someone force them to do it because like Atlas, Sega forced them to put their games on it and it's been successful. Square Enix does it anyway because the monies. But it's like, bro, it's you need to start. Well, that's another forward. company that uh, is. Is regretting not doing that. Well, Square Enix always always hated everybody else. I mean, they they still got the money anyway. From this game called Final Fantasy, the small independent game. <laughs> when you got Final Fantasy come out, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth come out, and still not do as good as Sixteen, even though Rebirth is a better game. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's a console exclusive. It doesn't. I mean, it, it, the FOMO factor isn't really filled again. Everyone's like, I wait six months and then. I, 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 there you go. Say it again, please. People are like, I'll just wait for it to come to the PC now. Yeah, the fo- the fo- the FOMO factor isn't isn't as prevalent as it used to be in the modern era of gaming. It just like it very it rarely kind of works. So it's like they still probably had an exclusive deal with Sony, so you have to wait like an X period and it'll be over, and then we all can enjoy it. By that time, I'll probably beat you know I already beat you know Ever Crisis. 
you know, on, you know, sorry, Crisis Core on stream. I'll probably beat, you know, remake on stream as well by that time it happens. Who knows? So, you know, check out the YouTube channel. I gotta go play there. remake on the PC. I, I beat it on a console and I'm like, no, it I plays smooth, it plays a lot smooth. Oh, it's I know. more responsive. Yeah, it came oh, out. Remake. Remake. <laughs> it had issues. It had a lot of issues when it first came out. The beginning, yeah. The beginning had a lot of issues they had to get patched. <clears throat> Man, this this waiting thing seems to work out for everybody. I just waited until we hold the patches. <laughs> <in. laughs> damn games over to the PC. I'm not begging. I'm trying to help you stay afloat. Yeah, I'm trying to help help me help you, you like unironically. Be around another ten years. I'll I'll, I'll just wait till everything comes to Game Pass. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Good we're luck not, with we're that. Not, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh that's a dangerous go, go, idea. Come on, come on, it'll it'll get it'll get put on Game Pass and then you get it on the PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, that's 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 happening. We 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 believe. You know, I, we I, believe. I, I, I just I just heard like, Keith's soul die there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh no. I'm tired of hearing that. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but then again, it is a bad thing depending on who you're talking what it is. But I keep hearing people say, just wait for it to come to Game Pass. Like, how about you buy the damn game and support the developers? I'll, I'll be honest. With, it comes hey, to game well, welcome, welcome to what I've been saying for like not ten plus months. But uh, not the Game Pass thing. But, you know, welcome to the party. It depends on it, the deal. It, it'll, 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 come, it'll, it'll come. It'll come to Game Pass. Then I get to play it for free. And then just before it leaves Game Pass, I buy it to continue playing at a discount. <laughs> right. And by the way, the games. The, yeah, game it's, Pass, it's called. It's called. It's called smart consumerism. Smart, yeah. You just pay twenty four like plus bucks a month so it comes out, but you know, keep paying. Yeah, on their monthly. Yeah, yeah. You pay, you wait. You pay ten months. You pay two hundred forty dollars worth of it to get a game for sixty dollars. I mean, that's like you know, it's like that's like going to a market to steal ten dollars dollars for a thousand dollars. But okay, the joke. Okay, so the, okay, so it's not smart commu- consumerism. It's American consumerism. Bingo. Oh, geez. Bingo my friend. Is Bingo. that even a thing? I mean, that's a joke, but you know, honestly, but um, the thing is, like, I was I was saying is that like I feel like. It, you know, Paul alluded to, which is true. Games leaving Game Pass, so it's like, what's the it, it, like, what's the point? I'm also just buy the game if it leaves Game Pass. I'm a, seriously, if there's a game you guys want and you have Game Pass, drop Game Pass, just buy the game for realsy, okay? You actually will actually have the game, and you don't have to pay a monthly fee to play a video game because you know that's kind of weird, don't you think? Don't you think? Now, see, I've tried to well, explain that to people. I was like, look, if you want to buy games you know you're gonna want then maybe it's better to just buy the game because if you're paying Microsoft fifteen dollars a month to, and you're paying to, for an entire be, year you've so already way, paid for the damn game and then the way but the way the way I see it though like if it's a game I'm not sure about and it comes to game pass then I've then yes. spent fifteen fifteen dollars to give it a try which would be like a rental fee or I pay the fifteen dollars and then I buy at the discounted price. That I can understand. That's a that's yeah. a. All right, but, but if it, but if, but, if but if it's something that it's like yes, I'm going I'm going to buy it. Then yes, I will buy it day one. Keith will never buy Elden Ring on Game Pass. <laughs> I mean, Keith next will year, never. I, Keith Keith will buy every Souls game three months before it comes out for early access, just so. <laughs> Just so, right. just, just so he can sit there like an addict going, you know, put it in my veins. You are right. I need it, baby. <laughs> you were correct 100% there. You're not lying there. Not lying there. Enforza. 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 But speaking Forza, of Forza, speaking Forza. of uh, putting games into people's arms, there's a game that I know somebody is not a fan of. Two people here are not fans of. You want to take it away, Carl? I know that was your topic. Well, yeah, it's, it's my topic, but it's sort of just something to kill a few minutes. Uh, this week we did have the reveal of Akuma for Street Fighter VI. Goku with one, Goki has with, returned. With once it, like the trailer was pretty cool, like to see him punching a rock, and they're talking about like you know how you know his He's ambition for power and, you know, and, yeah. and all that type of stuff. And he does a, a massive uppercut that basically just destroys a huge ass statue. Uh, you know, great looking trailer. Don't get me wrong, but like at this point, I really had to sit back and go, "Do I still care enough about Street Fighter Six to one reinstall it just to play Akuma, <laughs> who has been my main for many fucking years, even though he is a glass cannon? Maybe he won't this time. But, but, but that's the thing, like." Street Fighter 6 in itself hasn't appealed to me. I did the review for it and then it sat there 
and then I uninstalled it because I needed the space for something else. Like, I really just don't care about Street Fighter. Like, the the World Tour mode that they touted so much ended up being a boring grind fest. Everything's microtransaction to hell. They're doing crossovers, which, while some of them may seem cool, like, you know, the Turtles one, and, oh, their, their latest one, where they're bringing in Mega Man gear. Oh, no. <laughs> You know, somebody better, tell, that so, crap too, so, 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 somebody better <laughs> tell Josh about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, it's it's one of those points is I'm like, okay, we're going to hit the end of the first season character pass. Now we're going to get the, uh, is it going to be like forty dollars, fifty dollars, sixty dollars for for the next character pass? <sighs> And, and, and at this point, like the game is still so unbalanced and just so stupid that is it even worth going back even for a character that everybody wanted from day one? Like they, they do this every time. They did it with Street Fighter V as well. Akuma was late in, in the season pass as well because everybody wanted to play Akuma. But they're like, no, you can't have him yet. You can have him in a character pass later that you have to pay for. And we're going to put it as late as possible because we know that we can drag you along to keep playing our, our stupid game that has become microtransaction central. To, to And, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I, I, my whole thing with with this is like, is it too little too late for a lot of players? Is it too like little too late for, people, for... I feel yeah. like on the competitive end, people do want this because Akuma is always a main stable. My argument for Akuma is like, so, um, Street Fighter Six essentially Goop Man Go, which I call Goop Man Green, uh, turn green, break neutral, kill the character, right? It's like mm. the game is very, very unga bunga counter offense offensively. And the recent patch changes they made a lot of de- some one of the bigger defensive characters in the game, which they had to tone, they had to, was broken. Uh, JP got toned down. So it's like, all right, you got Akuma, and I'm worried about what Moose said didn't give him. He's got to have the Tatsu, he's got to have the uppercut. He's got to have, you know, the fireball. He's got to have the the, uh, the the demon teleport dash. And he's got to mm-hmm. have the demon flip. And I'm worried yeah. about how much real estate he's going to get by, being, let's say he does green, uh, you know, gr- uh, drive rush into demon flip, uh, teleport demon flip. Like, this guy would just be able to get at you, like, the same time. They're basically describing it. Hey, remember all those memes of DJ and Street Fighter Six where he just, like, zoom and, like, sweep you, drive rush sweep? Yeah, you're going to see that a lot with this character. And Akuma in every Street Fighter game he's been in, arguably I could say maybe five, has been like insanely strong, except for Third Strike 2. But the thing is, I had accidental mechanics. The reason why Akuma wasn't strong in Third Strike is because he didn't have access to one particular mechanic, and that's EXs. And that kind of stopped him from being like one of the top like gods of the game. And the gods of the game are Sean, Yun, Ken. Dudley, Makoto, Udian. And then you might see Akuma maybe like lower than that risk. And not having access to EX kind of stopped that. So in order yeah. to balance Akuma, you have to take away mechanics. So it's like, I wonder how they're going to balance him because he's always been a problem character. So they, that's just my take. Yeah. I, I reckon they'll make him the glass cannon again. Yeah, but that's high, the thing. High, 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 high damage, weak chin. Oh, the thing is that he was a glass cannon in all those games. The issue hmm. is that like he was a glass cannon that had insane everything going on and what makes it better he could defend himself he had an uppercut he was a shoto and all shotos have good uppercuts <laughs> whistle's a joke it's a fact of life look it up if you're a shotokan you're gonna get a good uppercut if you're a mishima yep. you're gonna get godfist electric win there we go let you know let you win godfist so you know so I'm, I'm more i'm more like i wonder how they're gonna tone him down from like flying all over the screen destroying everybody because can you imagine that he does Green, like you know, uh, you know, drive rush cancel, teleport, uh, raging demon, you're dead. And he did like three fourths of screen away from you. But then, but then again, that's why I now play King and Tekken 8. Anyway, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, brought rushing, grab combo, 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 you're dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> same way, guess, I, same, same, same way I play Akuma, same way I play Akuma, rush in, teleport, bang, 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 you're dead. Uh, no, uh, no, 100%. It's like. But I, like I said, most, most of the things I worry about is Akuma mechanically, how he's going to act mm. and how they're going to balance him around. Because the idea yeah. is that like he's always been like a game breaker. 
And the only yeah. and the one time he wasn't a game breaker or a couple of good games is when they had to like shoot his kneecaps or remove mechanics from him. And that's something I'm looking forward to see what they do because they don't then we're gonna see gonna see you know gonna see you know bearded man fly across the screen and take ninety percent of your life for no reason. But that's that's also the thing is like because he is one of those balance breakers. And one thing I did notice when I did play Street Fighter Six is that they are very slow in balance patches. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, how, how broken is he going to be and how is he going to be... He'll end up being the meta for a while and then what are they going to have to do to balance him out and then rebalance the game? Because it seems like Capcom doesn't like actually balancing Street Fighter until they've taken all your money with like five or six uh, character passes. Yeah, there, there, there's a little to that. It's like, you know what? All right, it's the end of the cycle. Uh, here's a patch. Yo, you... Mm. you Yo, you, you, did you uh, did you nerf Dudley's uh, life and stun in uh, Street Fighter Four? He had ten fifty stuns, ten fifty. Nah, everything's all right. Go see ya. Yeah, it, it's you know that that could happen. That that could but, but happen. The the other the other thing that I I have like as much as I I like Akuma, uh, what the fuck, Capcom? Why is he looking more and more <laughs> like a sat squatch? <laughs> like well, you... like like I, I I understand going from like four to five. There was a time skip. And he's had, you know, he's been in the mountains. His hair's a lot bushier. His beard's a lot bushier. Now all of a sudden, the hair's gotten even bigger. Like this guy's going Super Saiyan three, <laughs> and the beard is like, you know, what what we would imagine Napa as a Super Saiyan three been <laughs> like, but it's white and it's starting to cover his whole body. So he's come becoming this 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 friggin' Super Saiyan three Broly hybrid. In, in look like why is his his is the one that's having the most dramatic change between like Street Fighter two three four five and now six like I I don't know can you give us a reason why this guy is aging so much yet Ryu just looks blob, like right? a guy guy in his forties on steroids he's well blob, right? that's well, Capcom um, that's, that's just Capcom, Capcom buddy no no they actually give me the blow about that so Street Fighter three hasn't happy yet in storyline. So that means that he's growing all this hair to have a massive haircut by the time Street Fighter 3 happens. Yeah, and even then, most of his hair is <laughs> red with a, with a single white streak up the side. Yeah. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. Like, is he trying to, like, transform into Goken from Street Fighter 4? I mean, or something? he's rock. He's kind of, he looking kind of Goken esque. I mean, him and Ryu both, like, kind of rocking the Goken single arm gear, you know? Yeah, like, I, I just don't get the design, like, why? Why can't we just keep him as, like, even as much as I hated his Street Fighter Five design, could we at least have kept that? Like, why did we have to go even further and then just make his hair white? Like, what? What did he see that scared him to go gray all of a sudden? I think they they want to show him. Like, Heath, oh, what did you see? Old... <laughs> yeah, he's like this old master. He's an old master. Hmm. You know, if if Keith grew his beard out and his hair out, he'd look like a Kuma. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Wait, so you want me to grow out my beard? You're green. Yeah, grow right? uh, 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 and, yeah, and your hair and, 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 and your hair into like a lion's mane thing. Then you could be the black Akuma. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> can you grow my hair like that? <laughs> well, if you no started twenty haircuts. years ago, you'd be there now. Yeah, There's you. No you, more you, I'm sorry. Just uh, how about just throw a bunch of Rogaine on you? Just like infinite amount of Rogaine. Maybe that'll help. But it'll probably stop me from being gray too. But my like my main my main question about all this is like does the slow rollout that Capcom has been doing with characters does this entice any of us to go back to the game at all or is it like too little too late? I, it's, it's Street Fighter unless you're like a hardcore competitive, is it done? Uh, I feel like they they haven't like after like after the initial like you know rollout for like uh, World Tour. And a couple of like casual content, and you can go to lobbies to play old Street Fighter. They haven't really made much of a focus on that, and they've been just straight up as they do focus on competitive. So unless you're competitive, that's it. I mean, you could try Akuma for like a week, go online, and that's it. But like, unless you're like in the sauce, I, I don't see like a casual person going back. Like if they're not in the sauce, because it's like it's how often you make the updates. I'm done with Street Fighter Six. I can't go back. Sorry. Fantastic. All right. So have you tried this fighting game called Blue oh. Fantasy? 
I heard that a character to uh, be would kick my ass up and down the street. So <laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah. At, at, at the moment, at the moment, we're waiting on Keith to get uh, Tekken Eight. What are you waiting yeah. for me to get Tekken Eight? I have Tekken Eight. Oh wow! Okay, I believe you. Um, but no, but on ironically though, I feel like that's kind of it. Like I feel like fighting games need to like make their updates and their uh, timeline for stuff faster. Like. Recently, another fighting game, you know, I just mentioned Grand Blue Fantasy, right? Oh, wow. Rising. He just gave me the middle thing. <laughs> yeah, this is Grand Fantasy Rising has, like, announced, like, oh, yeah, we have a character coming out in, uh, we have Vayne coming out in, like, I think April, and then in, like, in May or June, or May or June, we have Beatrix coming out. So it's, like, you have to kind of make your content train a little bit faster than this. Granted, though, the Capcom hype machine's got to be able to do everything, but it's, like, I feel like you have to be faster with your content now, because, you know, Carl's right. Like, yo, it's been like what? Uh, what six plus months? Here's Akuma. Like, what? What do you mean? What's going on? Well, going they're on? also doing that because they know people want him, and people will come yeah. back to play him. And they need to Not spend cool. a lot of their other resources on the microtransactions exactly. and the cosmetics yeah. and making sure they get collabs with so many people so they can get you to spend more money on things that you probably won't be using anyways. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, God. the, the, that the other like thing, a that, like, that I'm, we know. I, I'm lo- I'm <laughs> looking at it now. <laughs> I'm looking at the, looking at now. The initial release date for Street Fighter Six was the second of June, twenty twenty three. So at the point of the announcement for Akuma, we're now nine months since the game has come out. Jeez, it's March. And <laughs> yeah, and Akuma, I don't think they even had a a release date, if I remember correctly. For that, can we like, get a Cyber Akuma while we're waiting? That'd be awesome. Or a, thing, no, no, no. a skin for Akuma, Cyber Akuma. They did that skin in Street Fighter Five. Did they? Yes, they did. Can you, we get you, had to, you, you had you had to unlock it through something. I think it was either you had to buy a pass or you had to uh, defeat a challenge in order to get the skin. But yeah. okay. Akuma is Akuma is coming in spring at twenty twenty four. Okay, so it's going to be over twelve months. To get through that first character pass for four extra characters. Jeez. That is pathetic, to be honest. I wonder what we'll get in the next season pass. The block, uh, the block pro, is like pro, other pro, fighting. Pro, no, the thing is like pro, other fighting games have made their season pass like a faster, like King of Fighters, Iron <laughs> Blue, etc. So it's like guilty gear. Even, even so more like, even Mortal yeah. Kombat One has gone through their DLC um, characters a lot quicker than Street Fighter has. Like, it's it's crazy that like other games are putting out more characters and more content at a cheaper price, I might add you, <laughs> than Street Fighter Six because we all know Capcom doesn't like to do anything cheap. Well, <laughs> we can't. I I'm not I'm trying I'm not here to defend Capcom, but but you know they work in mysterious ways. They've always been like this. You, you expect them to change now. It's, They've gotten it's, worse. That's that's the thing. It They've feels it worse. depends on the project, but in general, I feel like for Street for Street Fighter in general, they do kind of drag their feet when it makes a big content. I mean, it's the same issue with like five and like even say parts of four. Like remember they the part four and like Street Fighter Four said part four. Street Fighter Four like arcade edition was so bad they did that on purpose so they could just make a patch so you can continue playing. So you had the nerf Yanni Yang. That was not fun. <laughs> Yeah, <sighs> it's it just it just seems to be one of those things where it's like, at least for the casual player, this is too little, too late. Like when a when a Kuma comes out, I might go and just play him in the. Carl, I, I think you're forgetting that's... something. I, 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 I think after watching pretty much most of the Capcom Cup and the Street Fighter mm-hmm. Street Fighter League, I think Street Fighter Six has gone past being a game for casuals. Oh yeah. It's it, not it is, a it is no. Anymore. It's no longer a casual game. It is. No. It is basically esports. I know what they said, but when they were like, "We're going to offer <laughs> a million dollars," oh, and all through the that. market and all through the marketing and everything else, it was, "Oh, this is a game that's going to bring the casuals back." We've we've modified the control schemes to make it easier for first time players, and look what happened. They've they've gone straight back to the the competition scene and and the esports market and the Evo. Die hard sweats, you know. That's, yeah, the FGC. They, yeah, the money's yeah. there. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because that's again, that's where the money is. It, it sucks that the, the casual market gets forgotten, especially in a game that they said, "Hey, we're going to design it to bring the casuals back. We're going to make <laughs> this a street bought, fighter game for everybody." Fighter sinker, we bought their lie. <laughs> mm. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about some Stellar Blade booty. I mean, demo. <laughs> booty, yeah. Booty, 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 booty. Yeah, Stella booty, sorry, baby. Let's go. The alternate costume? Like, are you trying to do something on purpose? I, I, be- I, 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 believe, I believe that the, the developers have this middle finger pointed up at all the... Uh, the, the wokey sexualization <laughs> people who who go you can't have sexualized women in gaming and they're just sitting there going <laughs> watch us watch us <laughs> yeah me, 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 meanwhile meanwhile they're sitting there and they're just watching money rain from the heavens because you know sex sells <laughs> you know it, it, you know it's cool and all that their uh their inspiration a lot of their inspiration is from another game that was pretty much like that so and also it was one of my favorite games when it first came out so i they got, <laughs> they got me. Yep. Oh, they got me. They got me. I got a copy of that game before it was even announced for North America. I was like, yep, I want that game now. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Keith likes the booty. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I also like good gameplay. It seems like this one has that as well. No, no. It's all about the booty. Yeah, booty, so let's booty talk time, about this the booty complements the gameplay. Was it even a demo? <laughs> I mean, I didn't get a chance to play it. Apparently it was a full a on demo, but I didn't. It, it went way too fast from being on the PlayStation Store to being no longer on the PlayStation Store by the time I saw it. So basically, folks, if you don't understand what's happening here, is there was a demo for a Star Blade that dropped a couple of days ago, and uh, as fast as it dropped for the PlayStation Five, it was removed from the PlayStation Store or delisted. It was. It was accidentally accidentally <laughs> oops we didn't mean to put that up so, somebody pushed the wrong button <laughs> instead of the schedule they put the publish <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, like, you know there, there are screens and there are warnings like do you sure you want to do yeah, this yeah this is the plan yeah <laughs> And then eventually, you know, people are like, hey, look at this. I got this gameplay footage. I mean, we did it too. We got this gameplay footage. We got this gameplay footage. Hey, look at this. We got this gameplay footage. <laughs> and then PlayStation was like, you know what? Oh, nope. God damn it, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they just wiped Not it. Like, today, you don't have man. access to this anymore. <laughs> like, oh, man. Play, 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 PlayStation said we're going to make this the new PT demo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but worse. <laughs> but worse. <laughs> That so, still that still sits in my library to this day, and yeah. it's like I'm I'm glad I have like my PlayStation Four that has it on there. Yep, I <laughs> but, have. But, like, if I want to get, get it anywhere else, from Final Fantasy 15 on there too. But once your hard drive you is going to anymore, food, so uh, I don't know what you're going to do about that, my friend. But yeah, so I mean, there wasn't really much to talk about that. You know, I really wish I had played the game. I heard it was fantastic. I heard it plays like it. Some people are like, it's a Souls game, but it's an action RPG game. So I wish people would stop assuming that Souls likes or yeah. like action RPGs. Because come on, guys, there are differences here. Stop doing it. And there were action RPGs before there were Souls likes. Yes. Can we stop I mean, doing this? I mean, it, it, action hot, RPGs hot, don't, put, don't, lock, don't lock movie behind stamina. So that's all I got to say. Most of them did not. That's what makes so, it Souls so, or whatever. But yeah. You know. So, so Keith, you're saying that Stellar Blade is the Dark Souls of action RPG games? Oh no, no, yeah. that's Maritama. That's Maritama. It has not been Maritama yet. You know, it has to be to the point where she walks up a ladder and then it catches you and then it turns away. And if it doesn't do that, and then you get a trophy. Then two people win. Then two people win. That was that was Resident Evil Four, <laughs> the original. So it's it's gonna be interesting. I. There's not really a lot to talk about with this game because if, we if, haven't if, really if gotten got, hands on. You, they said there's a demo of a real demo coming out, but yeah. I don't believe them. But. <laughs> if, you, if you got it, don't update shit. Yeah, don't put your they, PlayStation online yeah, uh, as because as soon as it recognizes your license, it revokes it. They're like, oh, right I'm still connected. So that was but, that was. But, but, but speaking, speaking as as you said there, Scott, with uh, license, don't renew license or anything like that. There was a new PSM bug going around. Oh yes, I sort saw of in that. relation to all this, uh, there was people who were. Uh, it happened to a lot of people who were getting Helldivers two on PlayStation. 
and there was a bug or something where you buy hell divers you wouldn't get access to it and if you try to restore the license it wiped stuff off your account like it wiped your licenses and sony's answer is too bad <laughs> we'll get to it <laughs> no no it wasn't we'll get to it it was too bad so sad no it is we'll get to it they literally have a post saying that they're investigating the bug. oh they're, they're fixed, so they've, they've done that now okay yeah so they're investigating they're, they're, the bug I haven't, I haven't but that's the all they're yet. that's all they said they're not giving you like yeah. any actual thing to do other than wait <laughs> which isn't very helpful it's like wait when their first uh, their first initial response was make a new account and buy the games again <laughs> what <laughs> which is oh, a yeah. terrible response because <laughs> mm. it was originally just like two or three people and they're just like oh it must have just been some random thing but then when they started getting petitions and more people having the bug happen it's up to i think 50 now that's when playstation mm. finally said okay we're investigating it calm down <laughs> yeah like when when the when the company's answer is make another account and buy it again when and and, and it's like we're not even going to refund you the one that yeah. you know, is bugged that that's that's poor business practices yes it is and when it like the initial idea to the whole thing was we're not even going to investigate it because oh it only affected a couple of people that brings up once again the issues with digital licenses and digital quote unquote ownership where you're essentially buying a license and if you lose the license because of a bug or a, an issue or the company just decides to revoke the license in like the, the case of the stellar blade demo you're pretty much up shikrit without a paddle because all those terms and conditions that you signed when you first started the console or when you signed up for the, the playstation store will have that nice little caveat in there that w will be if they decide to pull it for any reason or you lose it for whatever reason the company is not held responsible and they don't owe you any money and you can't get a refund that is the sorry state of digital gaming yeah there's always a downside to an upside huh and this is definitely yeah. the downside unfortunately pretty pretty much and that's why i keep saying to everybody if you have a chance to buy physical buy physical especially for consoles because I'm glad market, you said that because it's really shitty consoles. on consoles. It's really shitty on consoles. Yeah, the business practices on consoles is bad. Like for for anybody who owns like a PS5, PS4, or even an Xbox, whatever, um, they're mostly like no, they're gonna turn around and go, well, tough luck. It's in the term of conditions. Luckily, with thing like PC seems to be a lot more manageable. And it's not just in those terms. And it's not just Steam. It's yeah, not just Steam, supplies. but Epic Epic Games Store and everything else. They they <laughs> have other ways to um, investigate quickly to double check your account. Yep. And if it's like, oh, the license is missing to this, and you say, hey, you know, I paid for this. Can you check my account? They go on your account and go, oh yeah, you paid for this. Let's just restore the license. Whereas the consoles, it's like it's going to take too much. Can't be bothered. Until they have like, you know, hundred a couple of hundred people jumping down their throats about, it, and then they're like, "Oh shit, this could be problematic. We better get, <laughs> we better get to this." Yeah, we better do it fast yeah. too. Yeah, but it's again like I keep saying, you know, they can't take a physical game off, away from you once it's in your home. You know, you can't. You, you, there's licenses. Like I had a look at, I was going through my library the other day uh, on my PlayStation Five, looking for things to download. And I saw Deadpool. And it's like, oh, you can't play this. I went to go I went to go to the store page. Store page no longer exists. Yep. And it's like, well, okay, how am I supposed to pay, play it? And why do you still have it in my library? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, screw it. I've got a physical copy. They can't stop me from putting the physical copy on the, on the console because legally I'm allowed to play the physical copy that I bought. Though that does get me very confused with some things like Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. <laughs> I went to try and even play my physical copy and console said no. Huh. Because like if some sort of cat uh, uh. compatibility issue or some shit that they call it and they expected me to go and rebuy the game and I'm like, ah, no. Yeah, right? Like, I already bought it once. Why do you want me to buy it again? Fuck that. Mm. Yeah. 
like that's the problem with a lot of digital games, especially. It, and I've noticed it more on PlayStation than anything else. There are a lot of games that I know I have digitally that I got through my PlayStation Four that I bought and paid for that I cannot access on my PlayStation Five, and they don't really give you a reason. They just say this is not compatible with the PlayStation Five. But then I'll send you to the store page to buy it all over again. Hmm. And it's not even a PS5 update. You're basically rebuying the PS4 game. Which is which is <clears throat> stupid. Yeah, especially with like especially in the terms of Xenoverse, the PS5 version isn't even out yet. So there'd be no reason for that to even be incompatible. Exactly. But that that's been since day one of the PlayStation 5. Like you couldn't you couldn't play your digital copy of Xenoverse 2. Without having to go and rebuy it or rebuy a license or some shit like that through the PlayStation Store, which again, it's it's another one of those things of, you know, this is why digital digital games are a pain in the ass, at least on console. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's it's just it's just the way things are, and things need to get changed, and there's not going to be anybody forcing to get a change, and like it's. Like it's so bad that if you do a chargeback on PlayStation, they take your account. They yeah. go, "Oh, this this is mine now. Goodbye." Yeah, you can have thousands of dollars of games and do a chargeback, and they go, "Oh well." And yet, and yet if you do a chargeback on Microsoft, they're like, "Oh, cool, no problems." Like I I bought uh, the Batman Arkham collection on on Xbox. But the thing is, I already I didn't realize that I'd already bought like most of the games separately earlier. <laughs> I, I bought it by accident, <laughs> and I went in and I said, "Like, hold on, I already bought this. So, can I get a charge back?" And I just contacted Microsoft, and I said, "And they had an option of accidentally." Right. Bought, <laughs> I, I actually like it was like I said, you know, I accidentally bought this package, not knowing I had most of the games, and I could buy the single one cheaper. And they went, all right, cool. Refunded me the game, no problem. Refunded the money, and I went, I bought what, what I needed cheaper. You try to do that with Sony, and Sony will be like, no, we got your money, fuck off. Yep, pretty much. It's not fair. It's not cool at all. Hmm. It's bad business practices. But that way, you know, we have, to, we have something to complain about when they do something stupid. Yeah, pretty much. All right, folks. Wait, 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 but that does look confirm that we're getting a celebrate. Stella Blade demo at some point. Yeah, yeah it does. at some point. At some point, I'll, I'm just waiting for the game to come to PC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. It's gonna come. <laughs> it's gonna come. <laughs> I mean, it probably has a better shot than Bloodborne does. <laughs> Bloodborne. <laughs> that, <laughs> that game. No. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of hearing keep, that. I don't tell, care anymore. Keep telling yourself that, Keith. Keep telling I, yourself I, that. I, no, 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 I'm not one of the people that said Bloodborne's coming to the PC. I was like, you guys need to stop this. This is not coming. <laughs> Please stop. Please stop. You, you need a. You need a. Uh... You know, an F zero fix or something. I played. I played enough Bloodborne. I don't need it anymore. Trust me. I am fine with Bloodborne. I plat. That was like one of the only games I, that I got a platinum on a PlayStation. That should tell you something. I'm done. <laughs> uh, that said, folks, we are running. Be we're going over time for our, our podcast, so we're going to end it right here. Thanks for checking out with us. As always, you can check a Spectrum podcast on. YouTube, which is where you're watching right now, Amazon Podcast, uh, Buzzsprout, Spotify, and where else you can find great gaming podcasts, especially ours. You also can find us over the outerhaven.net. We got some great gaming and anime and manga and TV and films, news, reviews, previews, a lot of cool stuff. All right, so definitely check us out. And you can also find us over on Twitter at the Outer Haven, as well as Carl, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me just about anywhere. You can find me on either uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, at the Macing. You can also find me at twitch.tv forward slash the Macing two. Don't ask what happened to Macing one; he's dead, buried in the backyard. <laughs> uh, and you can also find me on Blue Sky at the Macing as well. Blue Blue Skies. What about you, Scott? You can find me pretty much everywhere with under the name Sith Scott. All right. <clears throat> What about you, Cecilius Matt? 
<clears throat> so yeah, you can find me on the uh, great website on the Outer Haven on you know the Outer Haven YouTube channel. All my contents there. You can find me on Twitch.tv slash Get Silliest, Twitter at Get Silliest. You probably see me post food, memes, or whatever. And uh, also, I'm on Blue Sky as well. So Blue Sky at Get Silliest. So uh, if it's if it's Get Silliest, it's most likely me. So you know, always check on that. All right, and you can find me anywhere by just typing in the magic word S H A D O W H A X O R. All right, folks, thank you for checking out this episode of Spectrum Podcast. And as always, if you like your video, do us a big favor, leave a comment so we can talk to you. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel because, you know, every uh, subscription helps us become bigger and bigger and soon we'll become Ultra Max. Not suck? Yeah, I know. Anyway, also be sure to like the video. Uh, that said, I and Matt will not be around next week. We will be going to PAX East 2024. You get should in take trouble a camera and do a live one with two of you. On you know, camera. that's an idea. Maybe <laughs> we will. Who knows? We'll figure yeah. out the uh, the mechanics and the stuff there. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys and gals and everybody else next time. Yeah. See ya.